Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I crochet, I spin on a drop spindle, I dab in a bit of weaving and all sorts of things, whatever takes my fancy really. Now this week we're having a look at a peg loom, so grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. Um, now, during the whole succession of, of lockdowns last year, I invested in a new piece of craft equipment that is actually quite affordable. I purchased off an Etsy seller something that is in this uh, hand-woven little pouch, and that is my peg loom. Um, so it's a very simple piece of kit and it, as looms go it's really rather affordable and um, they come in various different lengths uh, my stepmother has a longer one than this um, but this is mine and it's a, a bit of wood with lots of holes in in different sizes so you've got a thin small holes and larger holes um, with different spacing as well so that's how you work out your gauge for the loom it also comes with a series of rods now, some of the rods are doweling, and some of the thinner rods are um, this kind of plasticky, flexible stuff. I don't know exactly what the material is, um, but yeah. Um, so that's all that there is to the peg loom. Um, my one came with a little threader thing to help me get my warp sorted out. So I'm going to adjust your positioning and show you how I warp up my peg loom. Um, I have already made a pouch to keep the, the loom itself in. I'm now going to make one to um, keep the pegs in. So that, that's my project that I'm warping up. Um, I'll warp it up, show you how I do that and get started weaving on it. Um, and yeah, just show you how I use the loom really. As I say, it is quite affordable and it's a good way to use up leftover bits of, of yarn. So yeah, I will reposition you so you get a better view and um, we'll get going. Okay, so I've got my loom on my table, I've got some, some leftover yarn from my um, throwback cardigan. Um, I bought so much excess of this main colour, it's ridiculous. Um, but these are the, the colours I use for the colour work. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be using to make my little pouch. Um, these are my spare dowels that I didn't need when I made the last project. So I'm going to use them to sort of judge how wide I need to make it. Um, I'm basically going to go the width of the, the a little bit wider than the dowlings are long. Um, and once I've made my fabric, I will stitch together in much the same way as I've, I've stitched together this pouch. So um, I'm going to be using the thinner uh, pegs. So I'm going to put them somewhere around the middle of my loom and just sort of work out how many I need. Now I'm going to need to put them wider than the length of, of the pegs because when you weave obviously you, you pull the warps in together a bit so it always shrinks down a bit with, with weaving. So I'm just going to work out how many I need. Now the smaller pegs are on, on this particular loom and I will link to the seller down below. Um, they're all this plasticky material um, which is quite flexible and it bends and, and things. So what he's done is he's included four um, wooden dowels with it. So you put those on the outside edges um, to, to help sort of maintain your tension. Okay, so we're almost at the length of a peg. And as I say, I am going to go a little bit wider. So I'm going to put another one of these plastic pegs on either side. And then I will put the wooden dowlings, I'm actually going to put both on either side. Um, so they will, the patch should be longer than the pegs, but that's what I'm looking for because it's actually going to be quite a thick um, fabric once it's woven, so I want a bit of space to get the pegs in and out. Now, in these pegs there's a hole here. That's what I'm going to be putting my warp through using my 
threader, so that's going to fit in there. Handy little feature with this threader from this particular seller. It's made out of one of the dowlings that's done the, the wider pegs, so it actually fits in the loom for storage, which is quite useful. Um, so, remove these pegs that I don't need out of the way. And I'm going to use this yarn to make my warp. Uh, I'm just going to guesstimate how long I need my warp to be. So I want to go twice the way around the pegs. So actually I'm going to do about the same length as it's wide and I'll add a bit of extra on. Uh, I'm going to double it up. And add a few inches. I'd rather have too much warp and not need it all um, and have some ends to weave in than not enough. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, look, I can count. 17 pegs. So I'm going to need 17 warps. So I've got my warps all cut out in front of me and I'm going to start threading them through my loom. I'm going to start in the middle just because, um, why not really? So I'm going to take my middle peg and I'm going to take one of my warps, fold it in half, so it doubled over. And I'm going to put my little gadget through the hole in my peg, grab the loop through the threader, and the loop's just going to go over the top of the peg and tighten it. And that's my first warp. I'm going to do the same across all of the pegs until they're all warped up. I'm get my peg, put my threader through it, put my warp in the threader, sling the loop over the top and tighten. I am making sure that the side that the warp is coming out of is facing towards me. So they're all going to be the same. Now, I haven't been too precise when I've been measuring out these, these warps. There may be a little bit of variation in the length of them but that's not a massive problem and um, you'll notice as well some of these pegs are slightly tighter than others that's again not a problem so i'm just going to carry out the, on this process until all of my pegs are warped up in the same manner and i will come back to you when that is done Okay, so all my warps are in, and I've uh, noticed I've gone wildly different lengths with some of them, but that should be fine. Um, I can always do an extra bit if I end up with too short a fabric anyway, is what I did on the ends here. Um, I did a bit of extra weaving and, and just stitched it on. Um, but I'm going to secure the ends of my warps now by knotting the centre three together, then I'll do the next three, um, and then I'll probably do a couple of twos. What I do need to make sure when I'm knotting them is that the knots are all um, in line with each other because that's going to control the length of the fabric. So I'm just going to do a quick overhand knot with this central three and that's going to be my guideline for, for how long these warps are going to be. Um, and yeah, I mean it's still twice the length so we should be good. I mean, if I don't need to do a couple of pouches, that's probably going to be quite helpful anyway, because then I could one pouch for the thin dowels and one for the thick ones, so I'll probably end up doing that, actually. i do one for now and then do another one at a later date. So there's my next three warps. I'm going to knot them to the same length as the central three. More or less. I am not being too precise with this, but that's all right. 
and I've only got four left here so I'm just going to knot those in pairs again trying to get the length to match as we go across so that all my knots are sitting in line and these are literally just to hold the warps together as you're weaving um, and you'll see why that's important in a minute um, when I actually get to doing the weaving itself so I'll take my next three on this side the knots will be undone at the end when I'm finishing off um, but I'll talk about that later Okay, so that's all my knots done. They're all pretty even, um, and we're good to go. So this style of loom effectively uses gravity. There's no weighting on the warps. You're going to be weaving on the pegs and then moving the weaving down the warp as you go. Um, so I'm going to get started doing that. I might just adjust your position again slightly to give you a clearer view of what I'm doing. Um, Okay, so I've got my warp, my warps dangling off the edge of the table, and they're all hanging down in front of where their pegs are. And I'm going to let's start with this colour. So this is weaving at its most basic. We are basically going to be going in and out of the pegs and back again, and that's it. So I'm going to line my my weft thread through the first two pegs and I'm going to weave in and out hopefully my arm's not getting in your way across the pegs and then I'm going to cut come back again I'm just going to knock those down to the bottom the process I just repeat that all the way up the pegs until my pegs are full so it is very very simple weaving we're just backing back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth I'm just gonna knock everything down give it a little tug at this end just to make sure that everything is sitting in place in and out of the pegs and give it a little tug on the end so I'm going to keep doing that until my pegs are pretty full and I'll show you what the next step is So I'm about halfway up my pegs, normally I'd get another inch-ish, so I'm nearer the top. You don't want to go right the way up to the top of the pegs because you need to be able to grab hold of them. Um, I'm going to show you how we advance onto the warp with the, the peg loom, um, and it really is very simple. I'm going to choose a peg somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to pull it out. You see the warp is coming up through the middle of my weft, and I'm going to re replace it back in its hole behind. So pull the peg up, pop it back in its hole, pull the peg up, 
pop its back in its hole. I find it easiest to start in the middle, um, but that's just me. If I turn it round so you can see the back of the loom, sorry about the scraping along the table. Uh, see the warps are coming up here at the moment, we'll tighten them up in a minute. So you pull the peg out, put it back in its hole. Pull the peg out, put it back in its hole. I would ordinarily do this with it, the loom the other way around. Um, I suppose it doesn't really matter whether you've got the weaving working towards you or away. Um, although the next step is certainly easier if the weaving is towards you. Sometimes you need to give them a little bit of a wiggle to get them through the weft. Um, so actually the other half. Oh, yep, sorry for the planking. Um, let's see if we've got all these pegs back in their holes and your weaving has now moved down off the pegs onto your warp threads making sure I keep my weft um, thread out of the way So now it's all on the warp, we're going to slide it back up so that it's sitting closer to the pegs. Yes. Otherwise your tension is going to go a bit wonky. So you want it sitting up pretty much where those hitches are over the pegs. It will appear to go a little bit loose at this end, that's fine. Um, this starting tail of my weft is going to get sewn in at the end and that will help fix any tension issues. Um, and when I get to the end I'm going to be unknotting these and dealing with those. Um, but for now I'm ready to carry on weaving. So yep, same process again, just in and out of the pegs all the way across. all the way back. Um, th that's basically it, that's how you weave on these looms. Uh, so I'm going to carry on with that until I have enough fabric. There's a bit of thread just randomly putting them over there. But yeah, I'll carry on with this until I've got enough fabric to make my pouch. Um, and then obviously I'll take it off the loom and I will, will show you that in another video. So I hope you found that useful. It's a really simple loom to use. It'd be a great beginner loom if you wanted to, to do some weaving with a child, for instance, um, because the principles are just so simple. Um, I'm going to carry on weaving on this until I have enough fabric to make a pouch, as I say. And then I'll come back to you in another vi video and show you how I, I finish off the warps and, and take it off the loom. Um, that's probably going to be in a week or two's time at uh, some point in March uh, by the time I've got it woven and um, off the loom because we've got a podcast coming up next week um, with all the things I've been, been making through February so keep an eye out for that so um, like and subscribe down below and ding the bell so you get the notification for, for when the podcast comes up see what I've been making and when the next video comes up for the peg loom as well as all the other bits and bobs that I get up to. I'm aiming to, to post a video around about once a week. Um, no hard and fast it's going to be this day at this time because scheduling at the moment. Is... Um, but yeah, I'm aiming for about once a week. It's usually over the weekend at some point. Um, so I will see you in the next video. And until then, have a great week. Keep crafting and I will see you soon. Bye bye for now.